Are you a fan of Michael Jackson? Ever wonder the day-to-day -day details of Michael's music career? Want to experience his journey of a busy 1984? Then this video is for you. So kick back, relax, and let's take a trip down memory lane of the King of Pops. 1984. There's a wealth of books and magazine specials published on Michael this year. Dear Michael, Dear Michael Part 2, a tribute to Michael Jackson by actress Kim Fields is released on the Critique label. Michael appears on the cover of Francis Paris Match magazine. Motown releases five more compilation albums containing one or more Jackson 5 tracks. Every great Motown song LP and four different top 10 with a bullet LP anthologies. Michael wins four Canadian Black Music Awards in the categories Top International Album, Thriller, Top International Single, Billie Jean, Top Male Vocalist, and Entertainer of the Year. Somebody's Watching Me by Rockwell, whose real name is Kennedy Gordy, son of Barry Gordy, featuring Michael Jackson is released on Motown. Michael appears on the cover of Us magazine. Spotlight Specials, Michael Jackson LP, a radio broadcast album containing an interview with Michael is issued. Michael devises the themes and settings for the Victory Tour, and he and his brothers began visiting companies capable of producing the stage from his designs. Letter to Michael by Leslie is released on Stonehenge Records. January 7th, Michael is on the cover of Britain's Black Echoes. Let's Be the LP, a charity album is released, with monies raised being donated to the music and entertainment industry's own charity, the TJ Martell Foundation for Leukemia and Cancer Research. January 10th, Michael Jackson visits the Burn Center of Brotman Memorial Hospital in Los Angeles. January 11th, at the first annual Black Gold Awards, produced by Dick Clark, Michael Jackson wins in four categories. Top Male Vocalist, Best Video Performance, Beat It, Best Single of the Year, Billie Jean, Best Album of the Year, Thriller. January 16th, Michael wins an unprecedented eight awards at the 11th American Music Awards. Broadcast live from the Shrine Auditorium in Los Angeles, he attends in the company of Brooke Shields. At the age of only 25, Michael is the youngest recipient of the Special Award of Merit. Michael also wins Favorite Pop Album, Favorite Soul Album, Thriller, Favorite Pop Single, Billie Jean, Favorite Pop Video, Favorite Soul Video, Billie Jean, Favorite Pop and Rock Male Artist, and Favorite Soul Male Vocalist. The show is viewed by over 60 million people, and in the week following Michael's swoop and capture 39% of the evening's awards. Thriller sells a further 1 million copies in America. January 22nd. Thriller LP hits number one on the top 100 albums chart in Britain. January 24th. Shooting of the first Pepsi commercial begins with Alfonso Ribeiro, the 12-year-old star of the Broadway show The Tap Dance Kid, starring alongside Michael, who, together with Pepsi, reworks the lyrics of Billie Jean. January 26. Somebody's Watching Me LP by Rockwell, featuring Michael on the title track released on Motown. January 27th. The New York publishing house Doubleday & Company announces it will publish Michael Jackson's autobiography to be edited by Jacqueline Onassis. During the filming of the second Pepsi commercial, Michael suffers second and third degree scalp burns and is rushed to Cedar sinai Medical Center, where his arrival causes a media frenzy. He is later moved to the Brotman Memorial Hospital for treatment, the burn center to which he had paid a courtesy call only two weeks earlier. January 28th. Michael is released from the hospital but before leaving, visits other burn patients, some of whom he had visited earlier in the month. Following Michael's injury, 700,000 extra copies of Thriller are sold in America. The Man, a duet featuring Michael Jackson from Paul McCartney's Pipes of Peace LP is scheduled to be released by Parlophone Records, but is cancelled. February. Michael receives a Crystal Globe Award for record sales exceeding 5 million outside the U.S. Michael's companion at the ceremony is Brooke Shields. Eat It, That Boy Could Dance by Weird Al Yankovic with parody lyrics based on Michael's Beat It is released. Michael gives permission for the hilarious rework of his lyrics and enjoys it. Construction of the Victory Tour stage begins. Thriller, Can't Get Out of the Rain is released on Epic. The Happy Chipmunks sing Michael Jackson's Greatest Hits LP is released by Audio Fidelity Enterprise. PYT, Pretty Young Thing, Working Day and Night, The Girl Is Mine, Can't Get Out of the Rain, and Wanna Be Starting Something, Wanna Be Starting Something 2, is released on Epic's Instant Classics label. February 1st, Michael receives an official letter from President Reagan wishing him a speedy recovery from his burn injury. February 4th, Somebody's Watching Me by Rockwell enters the top 100 singles charting in Britain, peaking at number 6 and remains on the charts for 11 weeks. 
February 5th. One Day in Your Life LP by Michael Jackson is released on Motown. Michael makes his first public appearance since his burn injury on January 27th when he visits the Los Angeles Zoo in the company of Emmanuel Lewis, star of the TV series Webster. February 6th. Michael and Emmanuel Lewis are on the cover of Jet Magazine. February 7th. Michael, along with 15,000 invited guests, attends the New York Metropolitan Museum of Natural History and receives awards from CBS and the Guinness Book of World Records. To date, Thriller has sold over 20 million copies worldwide, more than any other album in recording history. Michael is presented with the first edition of the 1984 paperback version of the Guinness Book of World Records, which he receives from Norris McWhorter. For the first time ever, Battle Books halted the presses between January 20 and 23rd so that two new entries can be added to the book at the last minute announcing Thriller as the largest selling album of all time and the album with the most top 10 singles, 6. Despite below freezing temperatures, more than 1,000 fans wait patiently for a mere glimpse of Michael. The invitation itself was unique. Printed on a single white glove amongst the celebrities attending are Cindy Lauper, Mary Tyler Moore, Carly Simon, Calvin Klein, Andy Warhol, Sean Lennon, Robin Williams, and Gloria Gaynor. Alan Davis, president of CBS Records International, says, Tonight, Michael, your milestones for the album Thriller are a total of 67 gold and 58 platinum awards in 28 countries and 6 continents. And the single with 9 million sales have earned 15 more awards, bringing the total of 140 gold and platinum awards. Michael's date for the night again is Brooke Shields. February 11th. Thriller by Michael Jackson debuts at number 20 on the Pop Singles chart, peaking at number 4 and remaining on the charts for 14 weeks. February 12th, Michael appears on the cover of the News of the World's Color Supplement in Britain. February 18th, Thriller enters the top 10 in its second week on the charts. The first single to achieve this feat since John Lennon's Imagine hit the top 10 in its second week in 1971. It is also the highest debuting single 20 since Lennon's Imagine. Thriller is also the fifth top five single and seventh top 10 single from the album of the same name, making Michael the first artist in music history to achieve seven top 10 singles from one album. Their previous record was four top 10 singles. Thriller peaks on the pop singles chart at number three. Thriller enters the Black Singles chart, peaking at number 3 and remaining on the charts for 14 weeks. February 23rd. Compact Command Performances, 18 Greatest Hits by Michael Jackson and the Jackson 5, is released on CD by Motown. February 26th. Michael attends the premiere of Pepsi's Jackson's commercial at a black tie event for 1,000 bottlers at New York's Lincoln Center. February 27th. The Jackson's Pepsi commercial are previewed on MTV as part of a 28-minute Bob Giraldi documentary. MTV broadcast the two 60-second commercials free of charge. Michael and Brooke Shields are on the cover of Jet Magazine. February 28th. In the company of Brooke Shields and Emmanuel Lewis, Michael attends the 26th annual Grammy Award ceremonies broadcast from the Shrine Auditorium in Los Angeles. Michael wins eight Grammys in 10 categories. Album of the Year, Thriller. Best Pop Album Vocal, Thriller LP. Record of the Year, Beat It. Best Rock Male Vocal, Beat It. Best R&B Male Vocal, Billie Jean. Best New Song of the Year, Billie Jean. Producer of the Year with Quincy Jones. And Best Children's Recording, E.T., The Extraterrestrial, with narration by Michael Jackson. The Jackson's Pepsi commercial are aired during the telecast and are amongst the most successful and most popular ads ever, and the first and only set of advertisements ever to be included in the weekly TV Guide listings. Michael appears on many covers this month, including Cream, Blues and Soul, People, Us, Sun, The Star, National Enquirer, Number One, and The Globe. Michael receives 24 nominations in eight categories for the second annual American Video Awards. He wins in four of eight categories. Michael wins the People's Choice Award for the best all-around male entertainer and thriller is favorite video. Michael does not attend the presentation. March. Gerald Jacover, representing Fred Sanford, issues a writ against CBS in a copyright infringement case over The Girl Is Mine. He claims it has been plagiarized from his song, Please Love Me Now, which he submitted to CBS in 1981. James Clink, representing CBS, says that the suit is without foundation and the case is put back to December 1984. March 14th, news reports appear about the student protest at Bound Brook High School in New Jersey. The protesters have been banned from wearing their white Michael Jackson gloves in school. March 15th. Sales continue to rise for the Thriller album. Already the world's biggest selling album, which has now passed the 30 million mark, the Victory album by the Jacksons is shelved until sales of Thriller begin to fall off. 
Michael is Rolling Stone magazine's cover story with a letter from Jackson to Don King in which King is officially instructed not to communicate with anyone on Michael's behalf without prior permission. That all monies paid to Michael Jackson for his participation in the tour would be collected by Michael Jackson's personal representative not by Don King. That King did not have permission to approach any promoters, sponsors, or any other persons on Michael Jackson's behalf. That King was not to hire any personnel, any local promoters, book any halls, or for that matter, do anything without Michael Jackson's prior personal approval. March 17th, Eat It by Weird Al Yankovic enters the pop singles chart, peaking at number 12 and remains on the charts for seven weeks. March 19th, Mike was on the cover of Time Magazine with a nine-page article on the star. March 20th, Michael hires Frank DeLeo, Vice President of Promotions at Epic Records, as his manager. DeLeo was instrumental in the success of Thriller. March 23rd, I Love Quincy, broadcast by Channel 4 TV in Britain, includes segments of Michael rehearsing for the Thriller video and shows footage of a rare interview with Michael. Michael appears on the cover of Jet Magazine. March 29th, the Jackson's family select Frank Russo to run the Victory Tour in association with Danny O'Donovan. March 30th, the making of Michael Jackson's Thriller is released in Britain. The video sells 100,000 copies in only three days and becomes the biggest selling video ever for several years to come. March 31st, PYT, Pretty Young Thing, Heartbreak Hotel, released in February in Britain, enters the top 100 singles chart, peaking at number 11 and remains on the charts for eight weeks. April. Michael's Thriller has spent a record break in 37 weeks at number one, surpassing a previous record of 31 weeks held by Harry Belafonte, Calypso, and Fleetwood Mac's Rumors on the pop contemporary chart. There are only two albums that have outperformed Thriller, both soundtrack collections, West Side Story, 54 weeks, and the Broadway cast album for South Pacific, 69 weeks. Thriller has also spent 71 consecutive weeks in Billboard's top five, surpassed only by one other album, The Sound of Music. Leaders of Michael Jackson's church, the Jehovah's Witnesses, censor him for wearing makeup, an image they do not like projected by their followers. Rumors appear in Record Mirror regarding a new, up-tempo, self-penned Michael Jackson composition called Buffalo Bill. Michael Jackson and the Jackson 5, 18 Greatest Hits is released by Motown. Pepsi publicizes the times and dates for the airing of the Jackson's commercial in 317 U.S. newspapers. Jermaine Jackson, LP, Jermaine's first album for Arista, contains a duet with Michael on Tell me I'm not dreaming. It features the Jacksons on Escape from the Planet of the Ant-Men. Epic do not give permission to Arista Records to release the duet as a single, forcing frustrated Michael fans to buy the album. Jermaine Jackson is certified gold within three weeks. Michael appears on many covers this month, including USA Today, Sun, Cable Vision, Rock and Folk, Pop Giants, The Globe, Times 2, The National Enquirer, Times 3, and The Star, Times 4. Liza Minnelli accompanies Michael to Swifty Lazar's Oscar party night. After a short stay, they go on to visit Liza's father, director Vincent Minnelli. April 9th. David Smithy, a 14-year-old suffering from cystic fibrosis, is invited to visit Michael at the Encino family home. David's last wish is to meet Michael. David dies seven weeks later. April 12th, Beverly Page from the firm handling publicity for the concerts announces the tour will include only 12 cities instead of the original 30. It is reported that the hip hop junior shops of all John Wanamaker stores will start selling Michael Jackson inspired jackets, pants, skirts, and tops from May onward. Some outfits will come with a glitter glove or a pair of socks. April 14th, Michael Jackson endows a 19-bed unit at the Mount Sinai New York Medical Center. The center is a division of the T.J. Martell Foundation for Leukemia and Cancer Research. Mid-April, promoter Frank Russo is removed as tour manager after only three weeks. April 17th, Michael undergoes constructive scalp surgery at Brotman Memorial Hospital. Plastic surgeon Dr. Stephen Hofflin performs revolutionary laser surgery on Michael to repair damage he suffered to his scalp during the filming of the Pepsi commercial. After the surgery, Hoffman says, Michael is doing fine. 
we were able to cover the area using his own hair. He did not need any implants or transplants. He really needs to rest and this will provide him with that opportunity. He jumps back very rapidly, but we would like him to stay for several days. This has been quite traumatic physically and emotionally for him. The operation was very important to him to have a full head of hair without the necessity of wigs or other hair coverings. He wanted to get it over with. Whilst at the hospital, Michael receives over 5,000 telephone calls from his fans. Richard Heck, a contributor to the news magazine Breakaway, reports that Michael is working on a new project called Tingle. It is said to involve an album, a film, and three video cassettes, one of which has Michael on fire while wearing a purple dress. The next day, Hack admits his report was false due to a spoof article, which had been printed on Cable magazine. April 21st, in Britain, Melody Maker magazine puts Michael's name on its list of 10 fruitcakes, citing accounts that Michael bathes in Perrier water and talks to inflatable geese as the basis for this rather dubious distinction. April 26th, Michael Jackson wins the Narm Gift of Music Award for the best-selling album, Thriller, and best-selling single, Billie Jean. It is the first time in the history of the awards that this has happened. April 29th, Michael appears on the cover of the News of the World's Color Supplement, the world's hottest property. Late April, musicians for the Victory Tour are hired and rehearsals begin. Rolling Stone magazine readers poll nominate Michael as their number one artist, number one soul artist, number one producer with Quincy Jones, and choose Beat It as their number one video. The critics poll votes him number one artist, number one male vocalist, number one soul artist, and choose Billie Jean as their number one video. May, Michael and two companies licensed by him, Entertainers Merchandise Management Corp and MJJ Productions, file a civil suit in New York City over unauthorized Jackson memorabilia. An estimated $50 million worth of bogus Michael Jackson memorabilia is in the marketplace. Stephen Huff, Michael's New York lawyer, says Michael is concerned that the public doesn't get cheap, inferior goods. During his stay at Hemsley Palace Hotel in New York City, Michael expresses his liking for the uniform worn by the elevator operator, Hector Carmona, who gives him one of his spares. Michael later wears the jacket. Michael is on many covers this month, including Ebony Magazine, which names him one of the 100 most influential black Americans. Although no contract was signed, Frank Russo files a $20 million lawsuit against the Jacksons for going back on their verbal agreement to make him manager of the Victory Tour. Two Thriller 3D viewers are released in Britain, one of which is musical. Michael appears on the cover of Right On Magazine, Michael's Clean Sweep. May 5th, Katherine Jackson receives a Rolls Royce covered in ribbons and flowers from her sons for her 56th birthday. Although the gift is Jermaine's idea, news reports attribute only Michael with giving his mother the elaborate gift. May 11th, Michael attends a Cool in the Gang concert at Radio City Music Hall in New York City, accompanied by Tatum O'Neill. Michael is heavily disguised in a beard and a afro wig. Agents for Michael began confiscating unauthorized Jackson memorabilia. May 12th, Michael visits Shirley MacLaine backstage after her performance in Shirley MacLaine on Broadway. May 14th, President Reagan presents a special achievement award to Michael in a garden ceremony at the White House in recognition of his contribution to the nation's advertising campaign aimed at discouraging young people from drinking and driving. Michael's song, Beat It, was used by the Transportation Department in the campaign. The inscription on the plaque reads, To Michael Jackson, with appreciation for the outstanding example you have set for the youth of America and the world. Your historic record-breaking achievements and your preeminence in popular music are a tribute to your creativity, dedication, and great ability. The generous contribution of your time and talent to the national campaign against teen drunk driving will help millions of young Americans learn that drinking and driving can kill a friend Mid-May, Michael purchases a $10,000 professional makeup kit from Rick Baker, who worked with him on the Thriller video. May 15th, Thriller, the stage show production featuring Michael Jackson imitators, opens in Philadelphia. Despite President Reagan's request that the Victory Tour stops in Washington, D.C., the Jackson's personal manager announces that the city is not on the list of 12, which will be released gradually to help build excitement. May 17th. Farewell My Summer Love 1984 LP, containing nine unreleased Jackson tracks recorded in the early 70s, is distributed to radio stations. The track is part of a 40-song collection thought lost after Motown moved from Detroit to Los Angeles. 
The album meets with much negative criticism and the 1984 is dropped from the title of later pressings. The Fashion Foundation of America's 43rd Annual Survey of Custom Tailors and Designers named Michael Jackson, President Reagan, and the Archbishop of New York as America's Best Dressed Men. May 22nd, Awake, a Jehovah Witnesses publication quotes Michael as saying that he will never do a video like Thriller again because of feelings that it has offended many people. It also states that he has blocked further distribution of the film. It is announced that only Jackson's merchandise will be available at the Victory concerts and not Michael Jackson merchandise. May 23rd, Willie Nelson announces on NBC's Today Show that he may record a duet with Michael. May 24th, Michael Jackson and the Jackson 5 14 Greatest Hits LP and Michael Jackson and the Jackson 5 16 Greatest Hits LP are released on Motown. Motown reissues seven Jackson related albums Skyrider LP, Dancing Machine LP, Get It Together LP, Moving Violation LP, Joyful Jukebox Music LP, Michael Forever LP, and Music in Me LP. May 26. Farewell, My Summer Love. Call On Me by Michael Jackson, released this month by Motown Records, enters the pop singles chart peaking at number 38 and remains on the charts for 12 weeks. This is only the third commercially released Jackson single from Motown issued with a picture sleeve. May 27th, the Victory Tour stage, which took four months to construct, is complete. June, Michael's Thriller LP has sold over 30 million copies worldwide, as follows. America, 20 million. Canada, 2.2 million. Britain, 2 million. France, 1.8 million. Germany, 0.8 million. Japan, 0.7 million. The making of Michael Jackson's Thriller video is also confirmed as the biggest selling video on both sides of the Atlantic. Current sales in Britain stand at 130,000. Expected sales of the music video are around 4,000. Michael's on the cover of People, National Enquirer, Modern Screen, Us, Black Beat, and Right On. Two books, Michael Jackson by Stuart Reagan and Papa Joe's Boys by Leonard Pitt are published in Britain. Michael Jackson meets with other supporters of Camp Good Time in Malibu, a charity dedicated to young cancer patients by McDonald's. Others present are Dustin Hoffman, David Soule, Neil Diamond, and Richard Chamberlain. A Michael Jackson telephone hotline is set up in San Francisco and soon spreads to six other cities. June 2nd, Farewell My Summer Love LP enters the Pop and Black Albums chart, peaking at number 46 and 31 respectively, and remains on both charts for 15 weeks. Farewell My Summer Love, Call On Me by Michael Jackson, released in May in Britain, enters the Top 100 Singles chart, peaking at number 7 and remaining on the charts for 12 weeks. June 5th. The Victory Tour contract is signed by boxing promoter Don King, football promoter Chuck Sullivan, and Joe and Katherine Jackson. Sullivan pays $38.5 million to become tour promoter, of which $12.5 million is paid up front. June 9th. Farewell My Summer Love enters the Black Singles chart peaking at number 37 and remaining on the charts for 10 weeks. Michael attends briefly the unveiling of a wax likeness of himself at the Guinness Museum of World Records in San Francisco. A crowd of about 2,000 fans gathered to watch. Farewell My Summer Love LP enters the Top 100 Albums chart in Britain peaking at number 9 and remaining on the charts for 14 weeks. June 13th. Contracts are signed for victory tour dates in Birmingham, Kansas City, Dallas, and Jacksonville. State of Shock, the Jackson Jagger duet, and the first single from the Jackson's Victory album is aired on radio stations. KIQQ FM go Jackson crazy by playing State of Shock around the clock. DJs act as though nothing unusual is happening and inform listeners that they had just heard Bruce Springsteen, Cindy Lauper, and others when they had been listening to the Jacksons for nearly 24 hours. June 15th, Chuck Sullivan announces the first three venues for the Victory Tour in Kansas City, Irving, and Jacksonville with the opening concert scheduled for July 6th through 8th at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City, Missouri. June 19th, fans besiege post offices in Kansas City to buy money orders for the purchase of Victory Tour tickets. Likewise, earlier editions of the Kansas City Times are snapped up so that they can clip the coupon ads and purchase their tickets to the Victory Tour concert. An extra 20,000 copies of the paper are printed to satisfy the expected demand. Ron Chapman of KVIL, a Dallas radio station, accuses the Jacksons promoters of overriding arrogance regarding their attitude towards the distribution of tickets. Reverend Al Sharp of the National Youth Movement points to a media blitz against the Jacksons and states that they, the Jacksons, are being punished for not staying in the plantation of the music business. 
Michael is denounced by the Kremlin as a singer who has sold his black soul for white profit. They see him as a tool of the Reagan administration, helping to keep the U.S. public's mind off the country's real problems. June 20th, Governor Edwin Edwards of Louisiana says that he will not repeal the amusement tax for the Jacksons, appearance at the New Orleans Superdome as they have requested. June 21st, the management of Washington, D.C.'s RFK Stadium announces that the Jacksons will give concerts on July 28th through 30th, but this is not confirmed by the tour's publicist. June 22nd. It is confirmed that the Jacksons will bank all the money orders sent in for concert tickets and collect the interest. It is announced that due to knee surgery, Jackie will not be performing with his brothers on the tour. June 23rd. Michael Jackson and the Jackson 5, 14 Greatest Hits LP, enters the Pop Albums chart peaking at number 168 and remains on the charts for seven weeks. Every great Motown song LP a various artists compilation including Never Can Say Goodbye and Ben is released. The Great Love Songs of Michael Jackson LP and the Great Love Songs of the Jackson 5 LP is released on Motown. June 26. Michael and his brothers arrive in Birmingham for secret pre-rehearsals at the Birmingham Jefferson Civic Center. Officials of Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City, Missouri, say they have already received more ticket requests than there are tickets available for the three Jackson concerts. June 27th. Elaborate ticket purchasing guidelines for the Victory Tour are announced in New York City. June 28th. Michael attends a screening of Prince's Purple Rain at the Warner Brothers lot in Burbank, California. June 29th. During Victory Tour rehearsals in Atlanta, Michael and his brothers greet a crowd of several thousand fans who have gathered outside their hotel. June 30th, State of Shock, the Jackson Jagger duet released this month, enters the pop and black singles chart peaking at number three and four respectively and remains on the charts for 15 and 14 weeks respectively. July, Michael appears on the cover of many magazines this month, including Teen Bag, Bop, People, Teen Set, Movie Mirror, Tiger Beat, 16, Right On, Musician, Black Beat, Newsweek, Time, and Billboard. The Guinness Book of World Records Museum in Gatlingburg, Tennessee, reveals its wax statue of Michael, a second of which is housed in the Guinness Museum in San Francisco. Centipede Part 1, Centipede Part 2 by Reby Jackson is released on Columbia Records. The song is written and produced by Michael, who also sings backing vocals. The single peaks at number 24 on the pop singles chart. Jane Fonda's workout record, new and improved LP, including Wanna Be Starting Something by Michael Jackson, is released by Columbia Records. Victory LP is released in the US and Britain and, for the first time in music history, ships double platinum. To date, the Jacksons have sold over 100 million records, a figure surpassed only by the Beatles. The LP is released as a record album, a cassette, a CD, and a special picture disc with the science fiction cover portrait of the Jacksons pressed into clear plastic for serious collectors. The sleeve of the LP is designed by Michael Whelan, who created the book cover of Foundation's Edge by Isaac Asimov. All the Jacksons, with the exception of Michael, pose for the cover. Whelan has to work from photos of Michael, which are changed four times during the process. Show You the Way to Go, Blame It on the Boogie is released in Britain. Disco Net Program Service Volume 6, Program 13 LP, including an extended version of Can You Feel It is released. In Severin, France, a 17-year-old commits suicide after his parents refuse to pay for plastic surgery to make him look like Michael Jackson. Identified only as Eugene, his mother says he has become obsessed. While on the road with the Victory Tour, Michael and Tito accepts the NAACP's Dr. H. Claude Hudson Medal of Freedom Award and the 1984 Olympic Medal of Friendship Award on behalf of the entire Jackson family. July 1st, according to the local limousine service owner, Michael Jackson dons a disguise and hands out Jehovah's Witness literature door to door in Birmingham, Alabama. July 4th. The NAACP announces that Michael Jackson and his brothers have been named honorary co-chairman of the Civil Rights Organization's National Voter Registration Drive. The registration booths will be set up outside the Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City, venue of the tour's opening concert. July 5th, after receiving a letter from an 11-year-old fan, LaDonna Jones, in which she accuses the Jacksons and the promoters of being selfish and just out for money. Michael Jackson holds a major press conference to announce that the tour's organization and also to announce that the whole of his share of the proceeds of the Victory Tour will be donated to charity. Michael's tour profits will be split between three charities, the United Negro College Fund, Camp Good Times, 
the T.J. Martell Foundation for Leukemia and Cancer Research. LaDonna Jones later receives VIP treatment to a concert in Dallas. July 6th through 8th, the Victory Tours opening concert are performed at Arrowhead Stadium, Kansas City, Missouri. The Jacksons draw 135,000 fans over the three sellout shows, breaking their previous record of nearly 58,000 established in 1977. The Victory Tour, with 55 concerts, reportedly grosses $90 million and sets a new record for the largest grossing tour. July 6th. At 9.45 p.m., it is dark enough for the opening show in Kansas to begin. This sees Jermaine together with his brothers on stage for the first time in over eight years. This show does not include Michael's hit, Thriller, and although it is suggested that it is omitted due to the pressures from the Jehovah's Witness who complain that it will glorify satanic worship, the occult, and evil in general, AIDS insists that it is because Michael is not yet satisfied with the live set. At a press conference following the opening night's concert, Chuck Sullivan announced that local black promoters will be affiliated with local white stadium managers in each future venue to assure total racial harmony and promotional saturation in each city's local community. A Mount Vernon man makes bootleg videos of the opening concert at Arrowhead Stadium by tapping into the transmitted closed circuit multi-camera signal from the video feed to the giant screen above the stage. He is later arrested for selling bootlegs in the state of New York. July 7th, State of Shock, Your Ways, released in June in Britain, enters the top 100 singles chart, peaking at number 14 and remaining on the charts for 10 weeks. The song, written by Michael and Randy Hansen, was originally to be sung with Freddie Mercury. A special limited edition of 2000 is also issued. July 8th, Reverend Jesse Jackson in Kansas City to address the African Methodist Episcopal Church Convention visits the Jacksons at their hotel and attends the concert at Arrowhead Stadium. July 10th, KLSI radio station announces that during their less than two hours on stage, the Jacksons made $1 million per hour and a total of $6 million during their three-day stay in Kansas. It is also estimated that the Jacksons concerts generated approximately $26 million for the city and local businesses. July 13th through 15th. The Jacksons perform concerts at Texas Stadium in Dallas. They donate 1,200 tickets to underprivileged children, while their sponsors, Pepsi Cola, donate an additional 1,300 tickets valued at $39,000. Security for these shows is three times usually required for a Dallas Cowboys game, with 340 security officers on duty that night. At this Friday, the 13th concert, the stadium is full of celebrities, including David Lee Roth, Manuel Lewis, and Prince. July 14th. Eddie Van Halen in Dallas for his own concert joins Michael on stage for a beat it guest appearance playing electric guitar. July 16th, Michael Jackson is on the cover of Newsweek. July 20th, publicity of the Michael Jackson doll begins. There are six different outfits available for the miniature figure. Retailing at $13, the doll is officially approved of Michael. July 21st through 23rd, the Jacksons perform in concert to three sellout audiences of over 135,000 at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida. This is a record, surpassing attendance records for previous rock events set by the Rolling Stones in 1975 at 75,000, the Beatles in 1964 at 20,000, and The Who 1976 at 15,000. After the first concert, Michael meets eight children suffering from incurable diseases backstage. 14-year-old Melanda Hooper, who has only a short time to live, wrote to Jake Godbold, mayor of Jacksonville, informing him of her wish to meet her idol. Godbold wrote to Michael, who despite a very busy schedule, makes the time to see this little girl. 700 disadvantaged or handicapped children are also treated to the thrill of their lives as special guests of Michael. July 21st. Billboard magazine's special issue devoted to Michael with a 28-page pullout and photos from his personal collection is due to hit the streets. Release is delayed, however. Michael appears on the cover of Paris Match and Record Mirror with articles on the Victory Tour. Victory LP enters the top 100 albums chart in Britain, peaking at number 3 and remaining on the charts for 13 weeks. The album is later released as a limited edition picture disc with a chance to see Michael in concert. Victory LP enters the pop and black albums chart, peaking at number 4 and 3 respectively, and remaining on the charts for 30 and 28 weeks, respectively. Ease On Down the Road is reissued in Britain and re-enters the top 100 singles, chart peaking at 83, and remaining on the charts for three weeks. July 22nd, ticket sales set an all-time record with 165,000 tickets selling in less than nine hours when it is announced that the Jacksons will appear in New York at Giants Stadium on July 29th through 31st and at Madison Square Garden on August 4th through 5th.
July 29th to 31st. The Jacksons perform in concert at Giant Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Amongst the celebrities at the first show are Catherine and Janet Jackson, actor Eric Estrada, Yoko Ono, Sean Lennon, and director Bob Giraldi. August. Special Michael Jackson issues of Bop and Modern Screen Special are published. And Michael is also on the cover of 16, Super Pop, Rock and Soul, Blues and Soul, Daytime TV, and Right On magazines. Since January, Michael has been on the covers of 170 magazines. Touch the One You Love, Girl, You're So Together by Michael Jackson is released in the US and Britain by Motown. Motown Love Collection LP, a various artist compilation featuring three Jackson 5 songs and Let's Beat It, the charity compilation album organized by Michael for cancer research are released by k International. Torture, Torture Part 2 by the Jacksons is released on Epic. In appreciation to Michael Jackson, hosted by Paul Gamble, Bacini is aired on Radio 1 in Britain. k International releases Let's Beat It LP, a compilation of songs from the various artists, including two from Michael, Say Say Say, and Human Nature. All profits from sales are to be donated to the TJ Martell Foundation. It is reported that Michael is largely instrumental in the album's release. The Jehovah's Witnesses debate Michael's superstar pop image, which conflicts with many of their beliefs. August 4th. Less than a month until the Victory Tour, 700,000 tickets have been sold for the Jacksons concert in five cities, a feat that would normally take a major act some 35 concerts to achieve. Victory LP has sold over 3.5 million copies worldwide to date. August 4th through 5th. The Jacksons perform in concert in New York City. Thousands of people who could not get tickets stand outside in the hopes of getting a glimpse of Michael as he arrives at Madison Square Garden. More than 2,000 uniform, plain clothed, and mounted New York City police officers are on duty at the cost of the city of $678,000. These precautions are taken to prevent muggings, which occurred at previous rock concerts. Celebrities at the New York concerts include Andy Warhol, Mayor Coach, Cindy Lauper, Pia Zadora, Bette Miller, John Denver, Neil Sedeca, Peter Frampton, Brooke Shields, and Emmanuel Lewis. During his stay in New York, Michael has dinner with Katherine Hepburn at her city townhouse. The Jacksons stay at the New York Penta Hotel, which displays six 40-foot busts of the Jacksons and a banner reading, Pepsi Presents the Jacksons. August 7th through 9th. Death threats against Michael received by the Knoxville News Sentinel, which print them word for word, have created chaos in ticket sales for the Knoxville concert scheduled for these dates. The FBI are called in to analyze the threats, which state that Michael will be assassinated on stage with many of his fans perishing along with him. Although the FBI deemed the threats to be unfounded, security in all forms is tightened. With death threats and heavy rain, this is the first victory show, which is not a sellout. However, with 48,700 183 tickets sold. It is the largest audience of the tour to date, and all three shows are a roaring success with Saturday and Sunday's shows both selling out with 50,239 and 49,485 tickets sold, respectively. August 9th. By 4 a.m., 3,000 fans have gathered in the parking lot of Detroit's Pontiac Silverdome to purchase Victory Tour tickets. By midday, the crowd has grown to 10,000. August 11th. Girl, You're So Together enters the top 100 singles chart in Britain, picking at number 33 and remaining on the charts for nine weeks. August 12th, Michael appears on the cover of the News of the World's Color Supplement Victory Tour. August 13th, in New York City, the Jacksons are scheduled to begin shooting the torture video directed by Jeff Stein. August 17th through 19th, the Jacksons perform in concert at the Pontiac Silver Dome in Detroit, Michigan. Michael shouts, we love you Motown, to the crowd in the Motor City, where he recorded his first number one hit 15 years earlier, and is so exuberant at the end of the show that he throws his black sequin jacket to a lucky fan in the audience. During the three Detroit dates, the Jacksons sell 145,000 tickets grossing $4.4 million. The last show is a sellout with an audience of 49,200. Even the obstructed view seats, which only go on sale that day, sell out. As negotiations to play in Gary, the Jacksons' hometown broke down. The group pay all expenses for 40 disadvantaged children from the Thelma Marshall Children's Home for Orphans, foster children, and abandoned children. The Hoosier Boys Home and the Donzell's Work Study Program for high school students working towards a college education to attend the third day in Detroit. Michael is staying with his friend, former child star Spanky McFarlane of the Our Gang movies. Michael films a home video at Pontiac City Hall, Michigan with a troop of police officers all donning sunglasses. August 18th. 
The Jackson Brothers have three hits on the pop singles chart this week. State of Shock by the Jacksons, three. Dynamite by Jermaine, 24 and Torture by the Jacksons, debuting at number 48. There are also four Jackson LPs on the pop albums chart. The Jacksons, Victory, 4, and Michael's Thriller, 31, Farewell My Summer Love, 105, and Off the Wall, 111. Torture enters the pop singles chart, peaking at number 17, and remains on the charts for 12 weeks. Michael appears on the cover of Britain's Woman magazine. August 22nd. Reports appear in the New York Daily News about problems that occurred during the production of the torture video at the Kaufman Astoria Studios in Queens, New York. An argument apparently breaks out between Michael and his brothers, resulting in neither Michael nor Jermaine participating in the video. Stand-ins perform Michael's dance sequences, and a wax figure is used for close-ups. Michael is said to be so upset over the incident that he takes a break from the tour and visits Disney World. It is announced that the tour will play Philadelphia on Labor Day weekend, September 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Despite unsold tickets, Stadium Management Corporation do not advertise the concerts at all. Instead, as has been the policy throughout the tour, they rely unwisely on word-of-mouth publicity to spread the news of Michael's arrival at each venue. This results in many unsold tickets and the possibility of third shows in Buffalo and Denver do not materialize due to poor initial sales. Michael's career suffers a backlash as only three days before the opening of Buffalo concert, 38,000 tickets remain unsold. Whilst he is recognized as a highly talented and creative individual, the public responds negatively to bad organization. Last minute tour planning, which announces the Buffalo dates only one week before they are to take place and a false announcement about a third concert that week leaves some people feeling that they are being manipulated and causes others to boycott the concerts altogether. Despite this, some fans camp out over 25 hours to obtain their choice seats. By the time the concert opens at the weekend, each show has sold just over 47,000 tickets for their capacity 48,200 stadium. However, merchandise sales are the best to date, according to Chuck Sullivan. August 25th to 26th, the Jacksons perform in a concert at Rich Stadium in Buffalo, New York. August 25th, Torture enters the Black Singles Chart, peaking at number 12 and remaining on the charts for 13 weeks. August 26th, the Detroit Free Press reports that Michael Jackson albums are selling for around 100 rubles, about $130, on the black market in the Soviet Union. A record 1.1 million tickets have been sold for the Victory Tour in only two months. August 29th. It is Michael Jackson's 26th birthday today, but in keeping with his religion, he does not celebrate. The only acknowledgement is from his fans holding Happy Birthday Michael banners in Detroit and Buffalo. August 31st. Reports appear that some members of the Jehovah's Witness now believe that Michael is the returned Messiah as foretold in the Bible passage about the raising up of the Archangel Michael, the symbol for the resurrected Christ. September. Michael is on the cover of Life, Black Beat, Cream, Close Up, Crack, Rock Postcards, Right On, Focus, Horoscope, and Rock and Soul magazine. Madam Two Souls of London approached Frank DeLeo with a request to produce a wax figure of Michael Jackson. Centipede LP by Reby Jackson, including the song Centipede, written and produced by Michael and Come Alive is Saturday Night. Written by Marlon, Tito, and Jackie. A special part of me LP by Johnny Mathis featuring Love Never Felt So Good, co-written by Michael Jackson, Paul Anka, and Kathy Wakefield is released in Britain. September 1st through 2nd. The Jacksons perform in concert at JFK Stadium in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This show attracts one of the largest audience of the entire show with 60,000 fans packed into the stadium. Amongst the celebrity guests are Sly Stone and Bruce Springsteen, Andy Hernandez, aka Cody Mundy of the rock group Kid Creole and the Coconuts visit the show and says of Michael, as a performer who believes in injecting high energy into a show, I can appreciate more than most what goes into making of a Michael Jackson performance. The dictionary should contain another word that means great, superb, professional, energetic, entertaining, and the word should be Michael Jackson. September 3rd, the third Philadelphia Victory Tour concert is rained out. It is scheduled for September 28th with an additional concert set for September 29th. This rained out concert causes Senator Lloyd to introduce a bill requiring all outdoor concerts to have rain dates scheduled in the future. Torture video debuts on MTV with two lead vocalists, Michael and Jermaine, absent. According to the manufacturers of the Viewmaster 3D viewers, Michael Jackson has eclipsed E.T. as the public's favorite subject. September 5th. 
A press conference is held to dispel rumors about Michael's sex life, plastic surgery, and reports that he takes female hormones to keep his high voice. Although not present in person, Michael's two-page self pen statement to set the record straight once and for all is read out by his personal manager, Frank DeLeo, September 7th. Neither Michael nor any other members of the Jackson family attend the marriage of Janet to James DeBarge of the Motown group DeBarge, who are married in secret in Grand Rapids, Michigan. The marriage will be annulled in for months time. September 7th through 8th, the Jacksons perform a concert at Mile High Stadium in Denver, Colorado. Michael visits Elton John, who is giving his own concert at McNichols Arena, Denver. The Jacksons play to a sellout crowd of 53,678, while Elton John and James Taylor, also in concert that weekend, play to capacity crowds of 14,000 and 9,000, respectively. This is the 25th and final concert in America. The tour now moves on to Canada. September 8th. Torture, released in August in Britain, enters the top 100 singles chart, peaking at number 26 and remaining on the charts for six weeks. September 14th, at the first annual MTV Video Awards show, Michael Jackson's Thriller video wins awards in three separate categories, including Best Overall Performance, Best Choreography, and the Highly Coveted Viewer's Choice Award. Michael does not attend the presentation. September 15th. Michael, accompanied by Quincy Jones and four bodyguards, goes on a small shopping spree at the Paragraph Bookstore in Montreal, Canada. Michael buys Costume Cavalcade, The History of Costume, Scene Design, and Stravinsky in the theater. Jackson's Live LP enters the pop albums chart, peaking at number 191 and remains on the charts for two weeks. September 16th. Michael attends Sunday service at the Snowden Kingdom Hall of the Jehovah's Witness in Montreal, Canada. He is accompanied by a bodyguard and a secretary. September 17th or 18th, the Jacksons played to an audience of more than 116,540 in two sellout dates at Montreal's Olympic Stadium in Quebec. During the finale, Jackie hobbles on stage to join the brothers for Shake Your Body Down to the Ground, which sees all six brothers together in costume for the first time during the tour. September 21st to 22nd, the Jacksons perform to capacity audiences of 90,000 at two concerts at RFK Stadium, Washington, D.C. The tickets sell out in just three days. At the first show, the 29th of the tour, the first acknowledgement of the album after which the tour is named is made when the torture video is played on the screen above the stage. Among celebrities attending are Mike Love of the Beach Boys, Peaches of Peaches and Herb, Eva Gabar, and Ethel Kennedy. The Jacksons stay at the Regent Hotel in Georgetown, where Michael meets three winners of the anti-drunk driving riding competition at a dinner held in their honor. Michael also goes book shopping again, buying a photo book on Judy Garland and Liza Minnelli. Whilst in Washington, Michael visits the Kennedy Center Opera House to see Anthony Quinn and Lila Kedrova in the touring production of Zorba. He sits in the presidential box with presidential counselor Ed Meese. Although Michael tries to remain incognito, the cast knows of his arrival, saying, OK, get out the white gloves for the opening number. September 28th through 29th. The Jacksons perform in concert in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This is the rescheduled concert of September 3rd. Fans who cannot attend do not get a refund. October. Michael appears on the cover of many magazines, including Song Hits, Right On, Crack, Focus, and Record Collector. The Michael Jackson fact file from Omnibus Press is published in Britain. Reports appear in Melody Maker and Enemy that Michael is considering an offer from Geffen to star in a full-length feature film, Street Dandy. Body, Body Instrumental by the Jacksons is released on Epic, peaking at number 47 on the pop singles chart. Michael does not appear in the video. Calibre Records in Britain releases I'm In Love With Michael Jackson's Answer Phone by Julie. October 5th through 7th. The Jacksons perform in concert at the Canadian National Exhibition Stadium in Toronto. October 6th, Got To Be Their LP and Ben LP are released on a special twin packs cassette by Motown. October 12th through 14th, the Jacksons perform a concert at Kaminsky Park in Chicago, Illinois. October 19th through 20th, the Jacksons perform a concert at Municipal Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio. October 26th through 27th, the Jacksons perform a concert at Fulton County Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. November, People Magazine published People Extra, the first issue ever devoted entirely to one person, Michael Jackson. Love Never Felt So Good by Johnny Mathis, co-written by Michael, Paul Anka, and Kathy Wakefield, is released in Britain. The Jacksons are on the cover of Black Beat. Early November. 
Michael Jackson sits for the Madame Tussauds sculpture, Jim Matheson in Houston, Texas. Matheson makes drawings and takes photographs for creation of the clay model, which will form the basis of Michael's wax likeness. November 2nd through 3rd, the Jacksons perform in concert at the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida. November 9th through 10th, the Jacksons perform in concert at the Astro Dome in Houston, Texas. November 16th through 18th, the Jacksons perform a concert at Play Stadium in Vancouver, Canada, donating hundreds of tickets to the needy and underprivileged. November 18th, Michael Jackson is made an honorary member of the new Westminster Police Department while in British Columbia, Canada. Appointed PC-49, he swears as a police constable to serve the Queen and cause the peace to be kept and preserved. November 20th, 5,000 fans turn out to see Michael at the unveiling of his Hollywood Boulevard star number 1,793 on the Walk of Fame, which is located in front of Man's Chinese Theater between the stars of country singer Lefty Frizzell and actress Lupe Velez. He has to abandon his speech, fearing serious injury to many youngsters fighting to catch a glimpse of him. Michael becomes the first celebrity to have two different stars dedicated to him, having first to receive one as a member of the Jackson 5 in 1980. November 27th, the Jacksons are sued for $50 million by designers Sandra Simone and Don Greer of Cinema City Studios. It is claimed that the group used their concepts, including musical instruments and costume light-up boots without payment or credit. This credit actually belongs to Nike, Ned Jackson, Jackie Jackson's ex-wife, and the legendary Bill Whitten. November 30th through December 2nd, the Jacksons perform a concert at Dodger Stadium, Los Angeles, California. December. Michael Jackson is voted 1984 Heroes of Young America by a poll of 4,000 teenagers, which gained him an entry in the World Almanac and Book of Facts 1985. Michael is on the cover of Ebony, Blackbeat, and Us magazines. Michael wins three polls in the British newspaper, The Sun, for Best Male Singer, Best Video Thriller, and Best Album. Rock's Thriller, a 90-minute special on Michael Jackson, is aired on Britain's Radio 1. L.A. is My Lady, a video produced by Quincy Jones for Frank Sinatra and featuring brief appearances by Michael and Latoya is released. December 4th. Although nearing its close, there are still many internal wranglings between the promoters and the Jackson representatives. A dispute over gate receipts sees a short suspension in ticket sales and fears of cancellation grow. Michael Jackson is in Chicago to testify in court that he wrote The Girl Is Mine. His testimony is part of CBS's rebuttal to the $5 million suit filed by Fred Sanford, who claims it is his song, Please Love Me Now, submitted to CBS in March 1982. In his testimony, Michael states that he has written and recorded many, many unreleased songs, saying that he has simply lost count, and names as examples, Why Can't I Be, Thank You For Life, and The Toy, written but not used for the Richard Pryor movie. Michael uses a lookalike as a decoy in order to get into the court. December 7th through 9th, the Jacksons play their last victory tour concerts at Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, California. Over 2 million people came to see the Jacksons during the 55 concert 5-month tour, which crisscrossed America and Canada with the most ambitious design and execution ever created for the concert stage. During Shake Your Body, Michael announces a split from the Jacksons. The tour grossed a record $75 million and thanks to Michael Jackson, for the first time Pepsi-Cola overtake their arch rivals Coca-Cola. However, there are a number of lawsuits involving the tour pending. Jonathan King says of the tour, What you saw on stage at the Jacksons tour was the Michael Jackson of the single glove, the interesting hat, the moonwalking and all that. What you didn't see was Michael Jackson, the real performer. I think Michael should go out on stage with a small backing band and do a show where he just performs his excellent numbers on his own. Michael Jackson is extraordinarily talented. He is backed up by brothers who are not particularly talented and to cover that over, they do a lot of spectacle and pantomime and special effects. Also, it was booked by people who normally don't book tours out. So it did several venues in each place and sometimes not the right venues with the result that it did not always sell out. December 13th. Michael returns to Brotman Memorial Hospital, where he underwent treatment for a burn injury in April. He donates $1.5 million, monies received as a compensation from Pepsi, to set up the Michael Jackson burn unit to help child victims. December 14th. 
The jury in the Fred Sanford lawsuit against CBS Incorporated finds the corporation innocent of plagiarizing Sanford's song, Please Love Me Now, as the basis for Michael's song, The Girl Is Mine. Billboard Magazine's year-end chart ranks Michael in the following categories. Number one, pop album thriller. Number two, black album. Number two, top pop artist. Number three, most successful single, Say Say Say. And number six, top black artist. Thank you for sticking around through this entire year of 1984. Any true Michael Jackson fan knew this was a huge year. I hope you enjoyed the entire series, and I hope you return to learn his journey through 1985. I'm glad I was able to share with you his in-depth musical career and hope you'll return again. Please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks for watching.